all day. Money, power, respect. Three the hard way. What up, world? Welcome back to Three the Hard Way TV. I got a special edition of Three the Hard Way TV where I'm going to be introducing. I'm <laughs> <laughs> introducing and interviewing the incomparable Charles Longo rap phenomenon. My man. <laughs> how, <laughs> how you doing this evening, sir? What's good, man? It's an absolute pleasure to be here, my man. Okay, how you holding up in this uh this uh, this pandemic? I've been telling people as of right now, I have nothing profound to say about this madness that we're in. <laughs> Right, I, I feel that one hundred percent. Well, you know, I'm, I'm I'm gonna start doing these interviews more frequent, and no doubt, uh, Charles is he, he has an album out right now. His his uh, most recent uh, mm -hmm. uh, piece of work, Night mm -hmm. Classes, the final exam. Uh, it's available yes, on all formats. And when I say all formats, I mean all formats. Um, yes, sir. It's an incredible body of work, my man. Dude, thank you, man. And uh, it's, been, it's been a long time coming. I know <laughs> ever since uh, you and I are obviously associates in other uh, ventures <laughs> and right. things that we do. So yeah, you you know just as well as I do, man. It was a long time coming between life and everything, and we got it done. We got it done. Right. Um, okay. I I, I want to first start by before we get into these questions. I I, I you know I want to give you, I want to thank you for the opportunity for uh, having myself on the album, bro. Oh, it, it was my pleasure. As much as we talk about the culture and things that are happening right now, I was like. I, he has to narrate this out into the into the universe. So it was only right that I'm like, let me get let me call Dion, man. So thank you, thank you, man. Okay, I'm I'm, I'm humbled. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. Um, and, and before we really get into it, you know, um, my my favorite cut on the album is like what I can relate to the most. If, if I could find myself putting it on a playlist where I'm on a gym working out, it's regular dreams because it's like that that that's that speaks to me. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, and 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 the way I do things and it's like I don't know, it's like it's it, in a way I feel like it's my theme music. You know? Yeah. yeah. I'm a regular dude, I do regular things. Regular things. things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that 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 was the whole goal of the architect like I wanted to deromanticize whatever is going on in in the in the zeitgeist, you know. I I I try to deromanticize that cuz I know myself like who I am like I'm not going to I'm not going to posture something outside of that. So let me just let me just bring it down to to the level that that every man and every woman can understand. You know what I mean? So that's what that was. Absolutely. Okay. Um, let me get into my, my, my first talking point that I, I that I had for you. No um, worries. I, it was I was gonna kind of like describe the album to people and, and the way I felt like uh, mm -hmm. it, it came across to me. I felt like um, this album kind of like peel back the curtain on your life and yeah. and it gave us a um a glimpse of of your childhood mm -hmm. and um kind of like the turmoil you went through uh a, a, as a teen and, and your early adulthood and to mm -hmm. find it, and to find yourself right now where you are as a man and, and it just was like one hell of a journey to get where you are now yeah yeah that um for instance latchkey kids um writing about that time was like i have to capture this in a song so that 
people, if they remember what was going on in 92 and, it, or, or, and they were in Illinois at the time and they, they remembered this show and it's like, that, that is exactly why I wanted to paint it because it, it's a particular time. It's very specific. You know, we can talk about, we can talk about whatever's going on in the past 10 years, but I, 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 the, the people that are listening to my music are like, they're listening to things if it like in a way where is it going to age well in 10 years? I would hope that's the kind of music I want to make, you know, and that's why um, I want regular dreams to age well in 10 years. And someone still hears it and like this still resonates and it wasn't like no flavor of the week, you know? Right. So yeah. Yeah. And, and you connecting with that and, and hearing that, I was pulling back the curtain and it was pretty raw, but necessary because all my thoughts are literally coming out onto this where it's accessible. That's what I wanted. I wanted it to be accessible for everybody. It's like, if someone's been there, let me meet you. Let me meet you over there, you know, like through, through a particular song in the, on the project. I, I, I feel like, um, um, my favorite song should be in a in a a music score like <laughs> you know some, <laughs> like, something goes rap. on and something yeah. goes on and a guy is just like wakes up and right. and and and, and, the, and it just plays you know right. like in some dramatic scene and I'm like <laughs> I knew that shit. Was supposed to be there, <laughs> right? Exactly, exactly. Okay, are we gonna get into these questions that um I have for you? And um, the first question is uh, I got for you is um, growing up listening to uh, music. Yes. Which artists uh, were you most influenced by? I'm going to answer that right now. And forgive me, I was only looking away to, I wrote down specifically because I made sure I had time to think to honor <laughs> this segment. Right. This segment. Um, top five rappers um, or a rapper, um, one, one of them. Okay, gonna, you know what? Give me your top five rappers bad. and then okay. give me the rapper you feel like influenced your sound and your style the most got you top rap, top five rappers in no particular order i can't do it i can't do it order i don't know why okay all right so 90s and, and i'm going by era 96 to 2006 j okay um 94 to 2006 nas with the exception of some Lucy's, some recent Lucy's. <laughs> <laughs> um, 95 to 2007, Ghostface. Okay. 95 to 2008, AZ. AZ? AZ, AZ. made the list. Okay. AZ I'll, made the list. I'll, 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 you know what? And, and I can hear those influences. Mm. and your music they're, they're absolute legends Dion they're absolute legends in, in my mind man yeah um I, and and I'll and I know I, and I'm not trying to break the rules but I, I got three I got three more I'll okay keep it. give us those got, three bonus man yeah three bonus just, just uh 2004 to 2012 Royce the five nine okay 2000 to 2008, Joe Button. Okay. And um, 2000 to 2007, Cam. Flawless. Killer. Killer. And <laughs> hey, you know what? Uh, quick, quick side story. I don't want to turn it to Nori. <laughs> but, but no, you good. You good. I, I, I live on the west side of. Well, I used to live on the west side of Chicago. And yes. Cam used to hang with the hustlers that lived 
uh, down the street from me. So when he made those Pulaski references, Ke Bro. Killer Cam was literally on the next street from me, and I would see Cameron. Bro, let me not forget, Get It in Ohio is a classic, and he absolutely referenced every place he was getting it at. Uh-huh. I'm on the south side of Chicago. All, all of those. <laughs> yeah. He, Bro. He, was here, he was here for real. Dude, and like you you tying that in. See, this is what I'm talking about. Connecting fibers in history, man. Like you were there. You were right. there. When Cam always says, you wasn't there. No, you were there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Man. man. It, it, he was Cam Killer Cam was hot at, at that time in that time period. Smoking. Okay. Man. My next question for you, I got I got some tough ones. I got some tough ones. Okay. Um Trapped on a Desert Island. Mm. You get to bring five albums. Mm. What you taking? There's a there's a album from 1997 that next to no one knows about called the dino spectrum it's a it's a all every song is a posse cut guys from a, a label called rhyme sayers i heard this album it was on a they they synced up a song on a skate skate video section of a breakdancing cassette that we were watching and vibing out to and i'm like who is this that's when napster was around and i found out it was the dino spectrum it was like a one-off it was like it was like a slaughterhouse before a slaughterhouse. And I'm like, I don't know these dudes, but they're, they're rhyming illustrious, man. It was like crazy. Like, so the Dino Spectrum, um, I got a favorite, um, I got a favorite album from the Deftones called Around the Fur. I got um, uh, MF Doom, Doomsday, because it was I mean, so many comic book and movie references and um, just the way Doom rhymes is, it just reminds me of like, it's the closest thing to having a conversation with somebody like on wax. Um, Rock Marciano, Mark Berg Reloaded. Um, and it's a tie between Nirvana Nevermind and Jimi Hendrix Greatest Hits, probably. Wow. Wow. Time, yeah, time, uh, timeless music, right? It, again, I come back to this stuff time and time again, and it's just it doesn't age, man. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> my next question for you. Yes. Yes, sir. Is. <gasps> What do you think of the uh, the versus battles? You know that that's recently been uh, mm -hmm. getting really popular during the quarantine. We got producers and mm -hmm. artists uh, going against each other. And do you think this is 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 good for music? Like in a sense of uh, bringing it back and getting people hyped up to listen to all these old tunes. It it I mean <clears throat> now that we're in the era, I think now Instagram is like starting to pop more than ever during all this, especially with the live. And so when you have Swiss um, replaying classics, his classics rather from 20 plus years ago, right. and, and you're, you're taking us back to the school dances we went to that may or may not have gotten out of hand as, as Rough Riders was playing, <laughs> you know? <laughs> There's something so magical there. And, you know, um, I think it's good for music. I think, um, I don't know if this, the current generation now, I think it's Z, if, if we're going to, if we're going to uh, think of the class of, of, of which generation by, by letter. Um, I think it's good for them to hear stuff that they haven't heard. So if they're tuning in based on something that, Swiss was doing here or there just on a regular post when they're going live or when Timberland's going live, you're just like, man, you're appreciating these classics and you're not, you're not realizing how much these dudes are doing with their pen 
and their their instruments you know um the sean garrett one blew me away because I, I was never really on sean garrett like that but i totally get it after hearing what he was writing behind the scenes so i think it's great because it refreshed a lot of people to be reminded of that and i hope it solidifies a lot of things so the versus battles are dope um some people you know did it to a lesser success i'm sure you know like Gosh, what was it? Babyface and Teddy Riley? I Teddy Riley, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Hey, the, the Teddy Riley jokes haven't stopped yet. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Man, when you think about how ingenious these gentlemen are, and then you you realize when it comes to, like, the simple things that, like, I'm getting on IG Live and maybe just having, like, a beats pill to play your beats, you ain't got to have, like, the whole studio blowing out the speakers. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so I mean, all debacles aside, like it was, it was really fascinating to be keep it real. Like, I mean, I thought that that was really cool because you saw a human side to all the producers and stuff. So that was that was cool, you know, for the and, most part. And, and uh, some snippets of some funny stories, man, associated with that music. Absolutely, like the behind the scenes, crazy. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> since we're on the subject of the uh, versus battles. Which two artists would you, Charles Longo, like to see do a versus mm. battle? And who wins? MC or producers? Let's go, let's go both. Which two MCs and which two producers? Okay, okay. Well, I'll s i will I would say this, like I think. I'll go on record very briefly and say that Storch was matched up with Manny. He, they were matched up wrong. I think Storch and Trackmaster should have went. I just want to go. I just want to say that. I just want to clear that up real quick. Right. To whoever. But but I will say, um, I would love to see, of course, I would love to see Pharrell and someone like Pharrell and Kanye but like certain eras, like if they shaved it down to certain eras, I think Pharrell's got, I think Pharrell has, has, he has such a fascinating palette, but it's hard to say, man, I would, it's hard to pair people up. Like I think Alchemist, I think Alchemist and Just Blaze, it would just be crazy. I think, yeah. I personally think, I know Just Blaze, you know, he would he would take it just because he has so many – his ears are built for stadiums, you know. And although Alchemist, he's been in his deep cut bag and doing, like, these one-off projects with all these cats that, to me, I think his beats hit harder than a lot of people's beats. But then you got to go by who knows what, you know. So I would say um, we got, like, a Pharrell. If we had, like, a Pharrell and a Kanye, I'm going to say – I'm gonna say Pharrell's gonna take a lot of that, but it but it's hard to say. I, you would have to go by era, so it's hard for me to answer that. Depending upon uh, what the era would be, you know, because late I don't know if people are messing with 2019 Kanye, you know. Right. What did you say? It, it is hard. They just named him a billionaire. So maybe God, God bless him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, Hey, he, he's doing something right, uh, uh, evidently, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and, and Dion, forgive me, man. It, it is hard to say who would take it because it, it's hard to say, like, what, what, they're, what these people are going to play in a hypothetical battle. Like, where are they going to go in their bag, you know? And I, I would say it'd be hard to answer. But, you okay. know, um, yeah. Okay. All right. Well. I don't know if you uh, paid attention to it earlier, but uh, uh, mm. six, six nine is back in the mix. He's been going live. Appar even Apparently, put, even put out a new song today, which uh, I might add you if you haven't. Uh, you good people on YouTube who haven't heard it. You're gonna hear it here first on Free the Highway TV. It's ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yes. yes. <laughs> um, do you believe that? now that he's out of jail, can he maintain the same level of success and will this new generation really care about the rat label? 
Dude, it's it's a great question. I mean, it, it feels like to answer that, we would have to go back like, what was it, a year since he got caught, you know, spilling his guts in the courtroom and all that? Was that about yeah. a year, Dion? Yeah, he's, he, he probably did like 20 months of, of better behind Okay, so yeah, far. yeah. Yeah. So, like, it, I felt like the bubble popped. Like, as he was going in, there was this, like, Gen Z, you know, clout rap, face tat, colored hair wave that was, <laughs> you know, type aggravating. Absolutely. And, um, big, you know, like. Big money yeah. to the ear. <laughs> oh, yeah, like the, the money phone. I'm just like, man. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's like. <laughs> I, and, and like everything, every movement is re reeks of like troll, you know, and like, and, and it's, it's cool to be funny. Like funny is a currency. I mean, you online, it's priceless, man. Like you have an audience, you're hilarious. There's, there is a scathing truth in a lot of what you say. Right. Um, but, but you take someone like a six, nine and like, he's all over the place. And I think. I think he I think he's more controlled behind the scenes than we know and I think again like his whole stick is like just flagrant rigidity or whatever you know so as of right now I think when he went away something popped there was like a bubble that popped I don't know what it was but I think him coming back the people that may or may not have like been cool with him they're going to be split up based on whatever shenanigans he, he was doing going into jail. You know what I'm saying? That's my take. Okay. I, I, I like that answer. Mm. We just, now we just got to wait and see what happens because in the history of rap, this has never happened before. This is a first. True. I mean, and he pulled off this with ex true execution because he had a song in the tuck. His management was ready. I mean, he he had a, a gang of hit singles and stuff with Nicki and some of his stuff. He he smoothed out because after Gummo, everyone thought you know Onyx was back for a second. Uh, to, <laughs> to, to 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 a lesser degree, I might add. I agree with you. <laughs> yeah, the, the you know I. I like the boy's energy, but that, that shit's yeah. trash. Oh. That shit's trash. <laughs> uh, like, for sure, but I was just like, what is this? Like, like what, 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 what had you been thinking about him? Like, when he was out doing his thing, like, what was, what was you, like, your response over on the West Side? Me, personally, I, I, I was just like, any day now, somebody's going to kill this guy. Bro, <laughs> any day now, uh, especially with the um, the 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 gang debacles and him going out, and I was like, man, this is this can't be this can't be ending well, you know. And he attacked any and everybody, dude. And he he followed that Fifty Cent playbook. Well, yeah, to 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 a certain degree, but it's like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Him walking in a room versus fifty walking in a room, you're not gonna be afraid of a guy with rainbow color hair. <laughs> no, 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 no. And I don't, I don't. And oh, also, because we're in the post truth era, if I could, if I, we're in the post truth era. So like, like for instance, it didn't matter that Rick Ross was a CO. People still truly enjoy his music. I, I for one, I, all, all I to, get it. All to me, it matters. Yeah, to you. Yeah, <laughs> not, not, yeah. No, I totally get it. I totally get it, and I understand why. Because there's a certain code. There's a certain thing about ethics, and but in this post truth era, if you're a casual consumer of music. You typically are not bothered by what's going on surrounding the music. But in 2020, it feels like everything else matters but the music, the TikTok dance, the, <laughs> you know. So it's a very interesting wave, yeah. You know, be before I ask this next question, since you just spoke on the TikTok uh, wave, that, uh, that new Drake single, 
Mm-hmm. Yep. That that is just the electric slide and the dinosaur and the <laughs> 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 right and all, and all of that shit wrapped up into one. It's like this shit's just getting way too simple. I think I'm gonna come out with a dance next week. I, I'm I'm ready for you to come out with it because it's like one and two and three and four and I'm like, this is this this is what's happening. Like like does Drake does Drake what is what is he holding on to that he has to make a song like Tussie Slide? <laughs> I do. I I, I I flabbergasted. I am too. I'm per, like, bro, perplexed. <laughs> perplexed. Taken up. <laughs> taken aback. I'm taking yeah. <laughs> I'm taking it back. <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> At this point, uh, Charles, what what inspires the music? You know, everything from the pair of sneakers I got again that I lost in my childhood to my top. I recently put out a a top hundred plus favorite list on Facebook that like kind of gives like kind of a broad, broad brush strokes of who I am. So everything from a list it amidst, you know, tens of dozens of hundreds of movies that I've seen to the next outfit I'm going to wear to the book I read uh, in high school. Like I'm a, I'm a curator of history and I try to, of my own history and of things I'm interested in. So when it's, when it, when it's that uh, complex, it becomes every, everything is important. You know, um, when you narrated us out on a final exam, um, you were na- uh, narrating over a song, um, uh, it, the Ozarks, they did a cover to a song. It was off of a 1977 Italian horror film called Seven Bloodstained Orchids. And it was the opening credits. And I said, I saw this and I said, I need that score. And as soon as I, as soon as I got it and I said, I need to have Dion over this because um, this is going to, this is going to take out the album, but also this music. And when I saw it, it meant everything because where I was at in life, I was, I was reflecting. And that's the whole theme of night classes. So that's the whole theme of my music is I'm always reflecting on something. So if I could talk about, if I have music to accompany it and it sets the mood just right, it hits that sweet spot where my inspiration is up. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to write if I got to do some rewrites and just, and I, but I hold myself to that high standard. So it's AZ, it's J, it's Ghostface, it's MF Doom, and it's all those artists, um, specifically, you know, um, those, the just true wordsmiths, man. And so I always have just a level of respect to that, you know? And I, I mean, just being able to do this as long as I have been, um, it, it's been a pleasure. So. All those things inspire me, um, you know. Again, like hunting down that starter jacket that I that you know got stolen. You know, like you know, all that is little vignettes that piece together. All the little movie skits on night classes. All those things relate to me in some way. And sometimes it's a wink, wink in my personality, and sometimes it's just me, like you know, whatever. I'm cynical, so you know, um, so that's just where the, that skip was, or, you know, Vashti on, um, uh, at the end of that, um, at the end of that song, heard my name, Vashti's like, you know, she's talking about like, why don't we just sign cool people when she worked over at Def Jam and, right. and it's just, you know, and, um, and it was just like, she was perplexed when she's talking about this, somebody she dated Pharrell, she put out her own Jordan too, you know, um, uh, you know she's got stock in the game, and she's like scratching her head, like, "Where's the authenticity?" And I and, and that's why I'm excited to say, like, I want to be that in its most uncut form. Like, it's not tampered with. It's just me breathing and feeling natural to create. You know, I'm not on no deadlines or nothing. So, 
that that's what inspires me you know just that like a natural just being in my natural creative habitat as as i describe so yeah okay um my next question is what does fame mm -hmm. look like in 2020 mm. man it, at this point i think the formula is maximize an audience reaction and if you can do that um you're gonna attain some level of something right. and i think yeah i think there's probably about 25 different levels of fame at this point but i know pete i just yeah. I, I just want the one that lines my pocket with dead faces bro bro <laughs> that's it that's it you know <laughs> no 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 I, I, I would like to help people and shit like that too but no yeah no i mean i mean if if i can do both <laughs> right that was dead plan too you're like dead faces <laughs> yeah. um no no i you know i think there's a level i think you know a lot of people they're just like when i think about like a bobby schmurda or i think about like um Gosh, you know, some people are just trying to come up, you know, so I don't, I don't begrudge, I don't begrudge people trying to get ahead. Like they're doing stuff for the betterment of their family, their community and their friends around them, you know, and what that looks like, I get it, man. And then I know, I know, then I also know on the other side, there's artists that are just, just the thirstiest dudes, thirstiest women like they they're just seeking some kind of other validation and you can tell like it's just when you can tell when that's that's the factor that's when i worry about because i don't want i don't want that for people we see you know like michael went crazy dude like keep it real and i love michael like but he he was so he had so many hands in the pot um yeah. to some extent drake has a lot of, had a lot of hands in the pot you know so and I see that with a lot of people that end up, yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's big it, time. It, it, it just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how some people deal with it, but like you spoke on Kanye earlier, Kanye just, for like 18 months, Kanye was nuts. Bro, yeah, it's just, and, and, and then, and then I'm thinking like, yeah, I kind of see how people are nuts because you got 80 people in a studio and someone's got a demo and someone's got a SoundCloud. And I mean, I guess you'd probably lose your mind. But it's like, man, you got to learn how to like control your environment. And I don't know if artists, maybe, maybe they don't feel that. Maybe, maybe there's a lot of different reasons. But what fame looks like to me, there's so many different tiers right now. And and everyone, like big corporate, they're co-opting everything. Like that Tootsie slide, that was planned. Like Madonna, Madonna buying up um, and, and doing consulting. Um, that, that whole Nene thing, like that was, can, I ran out of a consulting firm that Madonna owns. She owns a consulting firm where people, are, it's designed to get people to go viral, you know? So like when Salento did that, like, I mean, I hope he lined his pockets, but it's just like that kind of quick money, you know, and I don't know what that sustainability looks like. And, you know, a lot of people kind of, they start to lose, you know, reality. And, and I, I like to stay based in reality. So it, it, it looks like a lot of different tiers in 2020, a lot of different tiers right now, you do, know. Do you think some of, some of these people, uh, Kanye obviously has longevity, but some of the, mm -hmm. the the newer artists, well, we have like the um, I can't remember the guy name. He was, it was just a few of them that were recently arrested, because um, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they all like in the same in the same bunch. So you know, it's a bunch of littles and it's a bunch of youngs, and mm -hmm. then they end up getting arrested for uh, gun possession and different things like that. Do you think the fame is coming too fast for these mm -hmm. guys that were just and uh, uh, like living in poverty, pretty much. Mm -hmm. I mean, <clears throat> I think I think I know that record execs, and I know 
it gets real chilly when you start climbing up higher and higher. And I'm not, not on really on any kind of conspiracy tip. I just think it's in plain sight that people see the opportunity. And a lot of times it happens to be where it, coming from a place of struggle and where there's talent there. I just don't appreciate the exploitive side of this kind of A&R situation that goes on, you know, like there's an exploitive side there. And look, if someone is coming from like a place just like what, like in poverty, like right there, of course they're going to take an opportunity. But, you know, Fonte from Little Brother was saying the other day on the, um, he was saying on a podcast, he was like, man, he's like record labels. They're just like glorified payday loans, you know? Right. And um, I wish more people would know that, but I also understand, I completely understand people are trying to get a bag and, and, and feel good doing it, you know, and, but, but often there's no curation uh, with that and no care for these artists. And I, and I find that that's often sad, you know, um, and that, you know, that, not, mm -hmm. that, that was going to tie into my last question. I, I, do you feel like the record labels are doing some of these uh, artists dirty? Yeah, the, there, there is, um, in 2009, I remember I was in between some situations and I just remember specifically, 2009 wasn't a strong year for like hip, like hip hop. Um, I mean, not we at, had some- Not at all. <laughs> yeah, like, right? <laughs> Man, I think you and me like even talked in a, in the past about that. That was just like a weird year, man. Like it was yeah. like um, it was like Flow Rider, the the the, re the emergence of Flow Rider, and I'm like, okay, but like uh, it, I had like yeah, I was like, okay, okay, um, but like there in in, in I just saw a lot of people, this is the era, especially, I was in Vegas, a lot of people were doing startups and they were doing, they were building websites and they were entrepreneurial and a lot of these like um, startups were kind of, they saw what we were doing in the music scene and in, in particular. And I remember, I'll give you my experience, just, just a Cliff Notes version where essentially what happened was this guy wanted to build a whole website. I had like a 23 track mixtape. I was hype. You know, I, I had it ready to go. I was recording a lot. And um, next thing you know, he's giving me this pitch. He's like, you know, we're going to build this site and it's going to be a platform to completely launch you out of here. We're going to get you booked. Um, every, everything's going to be the, the traffic to this site. This is when websites were like a massive thing. Now everything's co-opted. Now everything's, you got YouTube. You know, there's no like third party sites that are like super pop and unless, you know, you have enough traffic from these major ones to direct, you know. Right. Um, so he's he's pitching me this this fever dream that he has. And, and I just remembered he's pitching this to me and he I just remember feeling like something this this isn't he talks a great game. It's someone that just. They're great talkers and they have this passion. Don I just King. remember when my CD, bro, the <laughs> charisma, right? Deceptive, deceptive charisma. And it's not like they always intended to be, but like I, what I didn't realize was this guy was on the verge of a nervous breakdown and I was the straw that broke that camel's back. And I didn't even know, you know, wow. so he, he hits me up on the eve that I'm pressing up. I think I was pressing up 200, like, CDs because we were going to go do, like, some little tours uh, over in Cali. And next thing I know, he's ready. He said he's going to launch the site. There was an iPad giveaway. We had all this stuff. Next thing you know, I hit him up, and he sends me a picture of him on a beach. He's like, hey, man, just let you know, like, God is good, but I'm – I, I'm just trying to get my mind right right now, man. I'll see you in three weeks. I'm like, bro, I had my engineer on the phone. I had like other people on the label and this guy just checked out. And I said, okay, we're already, fast forward now. We're in the DIY, do it yourself, do it to it. Like 
I don't need middlemen, all these people finagling stuff. Like, it's all good. Like, I pocket with the money I get from streams. I'm doing shows. I can put out a video when I want. Technology's beautiful. You know that. I mean, you've been doing it amazing. And um, that's why I say, like, it, it, it's, it starts from the little people, the little labels with, like, the good intentions to the big labels with, man, they'll, they'll talk you in circles and you won't even read the contract, you know? So have, have a good team, have a good lawyer, someone, a lawyer you trust. And, you know, so yeah, a, a lot of labels, you know, Megan, Megan the stallion, like she, she's, they want something else, you know? Um, you know, so I just want to, I just want artists to be more vigilant, like be more vigilant. Don't be afraid of these, dudes with the bag, you know, all this stuff, get, get the ideas, you know, the ideas are all, almost going to be worth more, you know, even though that quick money is real, you know, so. Right. So the album is called Night Class's Final Exam. Yes, Should sir. we be expecting anything soon? Because on that uh, beautiful outro, the narrator said, My we'll man. see you soon. <laughs> that's right that's right <laughs> that's right man so um part of seeing me soon is going to encompass two music videos i'm gonna have those and i i already got two songs written in the tuck that i'm ready to to put out um for the next project it'll be the con uh the, the continuity of everything before all the 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 first two EPs, semester one, semester two, and then this project final exam, this will be the continuity. So I'm gonna make sure I give you guys some visuals, make sure everyone's uh, engaged. Okay, sounds great, man. I'm, 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 I'm excited, I'm ready for it already. Maybe man, I have to, maybe I have to sneak, you, over, it, it, sneak over to the vault and, 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 and plug in my, uh, my headphones to the aux cord and get a listen. Bro, I'm telling you, man, like, I gotta, I, I, yeah, yeah, I gotta record those two, um, those, these two tracks I just got, um, they feel really good too, man, they feel really good, um, I, I wanna stay consistent with the mood, um, and, uh, yeah, man, it, and it's gonna be really cool, I'm excited. Okay, well, it was, it was great having you on, talking about your, uh, album. A night classes final exam that is available everywhere on all streaming services. Available Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube. Yep. Um, um, what I miss? YouTube. Uh, don't forget to 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 tell Hove uh, Hove to put uh, a couple of those tracks on his favorites playlist on title because it's on title so. I'll let your boy. <laughs> oh yeah, y'all, yeah, y'all DM. Does he have social media, or is he just too rich for that? You chip? know, Hove is uh, an elusive character. <laughs> if there ever was one. <laughs> 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 no, he's. You know, I'm sure he's. The, but yeah, it's on title. Um, you know, and I, I really appreciate everybody listening, and I can see, I can see that people are listening. It's, it. That's what's so cool about DIY, man. You have your own lane and people are ready. They're ready for the music, man. Okay, he, mar he married to the music. He signed himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well. And, 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 didn't, and didn't sign in blood. I did not sign that in blood. Yeah. <laughs> right, no, no need for a prenup. Nah, nah. We good. Okay, man. Um, when when the, when the new music comes, he will be back because I will be listening. <laughs> Thank My you, man, dude. Th Thank you. Thank you. Night classes, final exam, out everywhere. Y'all hit that subscribe button. Check out my man's music. We out. My man, salute. Thanks, Dion. Through the hard way, baby. <laughs> All day, money, power, respect, three the hard way.